Hi, welcome back. This is lesson two of Earth's Changing Climate. This is a unit for sixth grade scientists. This lesson is titled Exploring Energy in the Earth System. As we're getting started, a few things you're going to want to gather for our lesson is someone to talk to about your ideas as you're figuring things out during this lesson, something to write on, to jot down some of your thoughts, and then also we'll be using a digital model, the Earth's Changing Climate Sim from Amplify Science. If you have access to that, then you can open it up and have it ready to go. If you don't have access to the Sim, it's really fine because I'll be exploring it in this video and you'll be able to see it. During our last lesson, we found evidence of a trend that's been happening on Earth since about 1880. These two graphs on the screen that we looked at in a lot of detail during lesson one show that temperatures on the planet are increasing at the same rate that ice is decreasing. So the key concept that we discovered in lesson one is, although there are many fluctuations, there is a trend of rising temperature and decreasing ice on Earth since about 1880. So in this lesson today, we're going to be investigating what could be causing this, and we're going to pay special attention to energy because we know that temperature and melting ice are connected to energy. So just as a quick review, the word energy means the ability to make things move or change. And this image shows a glacier melting, which is definitely a change. So we know the energy must be involved. In addition to the vocab word energy, also remember the word temperature, which is a measure of how hot or cold something is, or the average kinetic energy of the molecules of a substance. Another vocab word that we've seen before is the word atmosphere, which is the layer of gases that surrounds a planet. But for the first time, we have a new vocabulary word, and this word is absorb, which means to take in energy. So the graphic on the left shows an image of Earth's atmosphere absorbing energy from the sun. But the picture on the right is something that you might be familiar with. It shows two different t-shirts, one in a dark color and one in a light color. And what you may have noticed before is that when you wear darker colored t-shirts, you actually do absor absorb more energy from the sun. Okay, so let's take a look at the digital model that we'll be using for today's lessons. So models like this are really important for scientists. As you're observing changes in the Earth's system, in a sim, you can make changes that would be really dangerous to make on Earth. In this sim, we could see what would happen if we covered the whole Earth with ice, or what would happen if we got rid of all the ice on Earth. Now, in real life, we would not want either scenario to happen on our planet. So if you look at the screen, you can see lots of little bubbles that show different things that you can do on the sim. And in a moment, you'll have a chance to explore it. But I want you to notice that there is uh, a menu on the screen that shows different types of gases in the atmosphere. You can actually move those up and down and increase or decrease the amount of gas. You'll also notice that there are a bunch of yellow arrows. Those arrows represent energy on its path from the sun and the Earth's atmosphere as it gets absorbed by the Earth or is released by the Earth back into space. You'll also notice that there is a line here, a dashed line, that does show the difference between Earth's atmosphere and outer space above it. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of the things that you can do in the sim. One thing that you can do is you can actually click on one of the energy arrows and you can watch it as it moves around in the atmosphere. What happens when it hits the Earth's surface? What happens when it exits the Earth's system? So that's a pretty cool thing to do. The best way to do that is to pause the sim, click on an arrow, and then hit play. It is possible to, to click on an arrow as the sim is playing, but it's hard to do, so it's easier if you pause it. Another thing you'll notice is that you can actually see the amount of ice that is on the surface and it can change. So you can see here in this first image, a lot of ice on Earth's surface, a medium amount of ice and no ice. And you'll also notice that the Earth itself is glowing a little bit. And that's because the sim is showing how much energy has been absorbed by the surface of the Earth. The more energy that's absorbed, the more it will glow yellow. One final thing that I want you to notice, there's a graph that you can open 
To open the graph, you just select the graph icon in the lower left corner of the screen. And when you do that, this graph pops up and it has lots of information. The black line tells you what the temperature on Earth is. This is the average global temperature. So it's taking into account what you already know, which is that places at the equator are going to be much warmer and places at the pole are going to be much colder. But an average global temperature takes in account all of the temperatures on Earth. You'll also notice that you can see how much energy has been absorbed. And in lesson one, we learned the word fluctuation, and you can definitely see that that line is fluctuating a lot. There's also the amount of surface ice on this blue line, and you'll be able to see what percentage of ice is covering Earth's surface. Okay, so how do you get onto the sim? The best way is just to go to seattleschools.org and then open up Clever. You can do that by just clicking here where it says Clever, and that will take you to your Clever account. Log in like you would using a computer at school. If you don't have access to the sim because you're not a sixth grader, you're not a student with Seattle Public School, it's okay because I'm going to be using it and you can totally take a look at it with me. Okay, so once you have your Clever account open, then click on the Amplify icon. And when you do that, then it will pop open and you need to first click on the Global Navigation menu in the top left corner and then scroll down through the Science apps until you see the one that's called Earth's Changing Climate. Okay, so let's take a look at this sim together. All right, here we go. I'm going to hide my picture so that you can see this a little bit better. So let's take a moment to notice some of the things that we can do here. It has time, global average temperature, which is set at 14 degrees Celsius, energy entered, and energy exited. Right now, those are both at zero. And then it has sunlight, so you can increase or decrease the amount of sunlight. It has different types of gases that you can find in Earth's atmosphere, and it has something called reflectivity. So if I hit play, then you'll notice that all the energy begins to move. And a couple of things happen. One, the amount of energy that's entered and exited are changing. And I noticed that those two numbers seem to be fairly consistently the same. So let's see if I can change some stuff. If I turn the sun off, there's no more energy coming from the sun. You'll notice that the amount of arrows moving around in the system starts to decrease and eventually go away. And now I'm noticing that there's a lot more energy that's exited than has entered. And whoa, look at the surface of the earth. There's so much ice. So let's move that back to medium. We do not want to do that. We don't want our planet to be covered in ice like that. So now you'll notice that more energy starts coming into Earth's surface. And as that happens, the global average temperature begins to increase again. And oh, look at that, the ice begins to, to melt and go back to the way it was before. Okay, so you're going to use the sim to explore the question, why is the ice on Earth melting? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to, to mess with it in any way that you can to try to make ice melt in the sim. You can also do what I just did to show how you can cover the whole surface with ice, but I want you to really focus on melting ice in the sim. What kinds of changes can you make that are going to make the ice melt? You can use a graphic like this as you're making your observations. This is just a quick little sketch of the sim. It shows um, a solid line to show Earth's surface and then a dashed line above it, which is showing outer space and atmosphere. And what I'd like you to do is just draw on the Earth's surface where the ice was when you started your exploration in the sim. And then after you made some of the ice melt, what's the difference there? And then just record what are some of the things that you did. You might want to record the average temperature of Earth before and after each melting and be ready to kind of share some of those ideas with a partner. Okay, go explore the sim, and when you're done, come back and we'll talk about what you discovered. Okay, I'm gonna move my picture over to the corner so that we can see the different gases in the atmosphere and also the ice in the corner. It's also fun to increase the speed to times four. And you can change the gases. Let's change all these gases. Whoa, the ice all went away. Okay, let's move them all down here. And oh, look at the ice growing. So it seems like increasing the amount of gas in the atmosphere is one way that we can get the ice to melt. 
Um, turning the sun up. That seems like that would get the ice to melt. Yep, that totally did. I noticed that the surface of the earth is glowing more. Um, let's click on reflectivity. Let's go to high. Let's see what happens. Oh, that makes the ice come really strong. Um, what if I go to low? Okay, that seems to make the ice melt. So having reflectivity at low, um, having the gases on high seems to be something that makes the ice melt. There's so many different cool things that are happening here. Hey, welcome back from your sim exploration. I hope that you can answer these two questions. The first question is, how did the global average temperature change when you made the ice melt? And how did the energy absorbed by the surface change when the ice melted? And so you can actually notice here on this screenshot that the global average temperature here was 14.6 degrees Celsius. And then after I made all the ice melt, it's at 30 degrees Celsius. So I can see that the temperature changed at the same time that the ice melted, which is what we noticed in the graphs on lesson one. And then I also noticed that the surface of the earth is glowing more yellow, which in the sim indicates more energy has been absorbed. There's more glowing yellow surface when the ice is gone. And so that's something that helps me understand that there's a connection between the amount of energy that's being absorbed by the Earth's surface and the temperature of the Earth and the amount of ice. So when I look at these two questions, how did the global average temperature change when you made the ice melt? The global average temperature increased. And how did the energy absorbed by the surface change when you made the ice melt? Energy absorbed by the surface increased. So from the sim exploration, we actually have discovered a new key concept for this unit, which is that the global average temperature increases when energy absorbed by the surface increases. So in our next lesson, we're going to really, really dig into the sim and we're going to explore the answer to this question, which is what kinds of changes to the atmosphere could affect how much energy is absorbed by Earth's surface? Now you might already have some ideas because of how you were exploring the sim. There might have been some changes that you made to the atmosphere that you think really made the most difference. But in our next lesson, we'll be exploring each type of gas one at a time. Okay, see you next time.